everyone. It's Terry from the Gypsy Magpie, and today I'm here for the Graphics Fairy Tag Team Friday to share a little tag that could be used inside of a junk journal. I'm kind of thinking of it as it's almost like a miniature junk journal itself. You could tuck a little, maybe a gift card in it or a note, um, but here's what I've got. It's just tied up with a ribbon. I have tied it around the back, so let me undo that and let's show you what we've got. On the outside, we've got a real pretty rose image and we've got some fabric. When you open it up, we've got a little um, religious card and we've just, this one's very simple. It's got one single sheet of paper inside. You could make it with as many as you wanted. I was trying to keep it very, very flat so I really could tuck it into a journal pocket. Um, it's got a simple closure. There are only two stitches. I've done that with three holes. We'll, we'll show you that later. And there's a tiny pocket in the back where you could include something. That's why I thought maybe a, um, a gift card would be a cute idea in there. So that's what we've got. You turn it over. We've got another image. Um, the whole thing is basically held together with two different things. The thing that's really holding it together is a piece of fabric. This stitching is really only here because I wanted to include something inside. If you left this out, you could just use the, the two sides of the tag. Um, I'll show you that once, once we get to making it, but that's what I've got here. Um, it was fun. I have never printed on vellum, on, I'm sorry, not vellum. I've never printed on tracing paper before. I've printed on vellum and it worked well, but I'm super cheap and I hated to pay 99 cents for a sheet of vellum that may or may not go through my printer. I had a couple unsuccessful attempts and my daughter was embroidering and she had a whole pad of tracing paper sitting there and I'm sure she paid all of like five bucks for it. So I stole a few pieces, fed them into my printer. Every single one of them went through beautifully. So. I will definitely not be buying vellum anymore. I'll be using tracing paper. If you don't have tracing paper, um, you can certainly do this project with just copy paper. That works too. Um, but the, the sheerness of the tracing paper, there's something super pretty about that. So I'll show you that a little bit a little bit down the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this one aside, but kind of keep it where we can still see it. This structure was simply made out of two shipping tags. They don't have to be any specific size. Um, like with most of the things we show you guys, use what you've got. If you have something that's slightly different, go ahead and use it. It's pretty easy to customize uh, by adjusting the size. So two plain shipping tags, that's how it started. I'm gonna move these out of the way to speed things up. I have kind of prepped a little bit one of these tags I covered with a paper that I couldn't resist this paper because it matches almost perfectly with this rose. It was so pretty. So covered one side, the other side I'm just gonna leave natural and I realize I need to punch that hole out. We're gonna do that in a second. So I've got that one covered. That is the inside. Now for, let me get rid of those. Now for this side, um, I went on to the French ephemera bundle and there were so many things to choose from. So I have a variety. The one I'm gonna use here for the sample is slightly different than this. They're, they're similar in nature, they're similar in color. Um, they're, you can't pick a bad one, so don't worry about what you're choosing out of the bundle. Choose something that speaks to you. So I printed that out and it's just printed on regular copy paper. I have already glued my tag onto the back of that, and I am gonna quickly snip away the excess as closely as I can. On a tutorial where you're trying to work quickly, it's not always your neatest work. So if something looks a little funky, that's why. Let me get rid of those. So we've got inside front cover, inside back cover. 
it's that quick. While I can see the hole, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna punch that. And you'll see, I'm gonna end up punching it several times. You could wait until both sides were covered and give it a rough eyeball, but I kind of want it to be where it's supposed to be. So let me line that up, punch that out. Okay, so we've got holes punched. Front, front inside, back inside. I have a tiny little pocket here, eyeballed, not any particular size. It can be any height you want. You could do double pockets. I kept it simple. I did one single pocket. You could use score tape. I'm gonna use a tiny little bit of liquid adhesive. And remember when you're gluing on a pocket, don't do all four sides. And ask me how I know that. How many times have I made that error? Too many times to count. So I've got adhesive along this side, the bottom, and the outside. So I'll be able to stick something under there. That is basically all there is to this. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna show you how we do this. It's almost like a binding and I would of course I would um, distress ink my tag. I'll try and do it. I thought about skipping it while I'm showing you guys, but I kind of can't stand how it looks so naked. So forgive me for a couple seconds there. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of butt those up together. Look at this where you can see it. And then what I'm going to do. I used a piece of fabric. You could use a pretty ribbon. Um, you could use any kind of a fabric. I was going to use a printed fabric and I just was to the point where I was spending so much time looking through my fabric, I kind of lost track of the, the whole purpose for doing that. I had to just shut it down. So you could use a muslin, it kind of goes with everything. I had a little bit of this left over from another project it's kind of wispy and ew, it's just, it's beautiful. And I love the selvage edge on it. I wanted to use that. I also liked that you could fray the edges of this. Your fabric does not need to be any particular size. It doesn't have to completely cover. Um, actually this one, I cut a little bit smaller than this one. It truly, truly makes no difference. It would have worked just as well to use the width of this muslin. I would just cut it a little bit at the bottom and give it a little snip and then tear it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use this, this sheer cloth. All I'm going to do is put a tiny little bit of adhesive. This is where score tape might work really nicely. I did notice with the liquid adhesive, you get a tiny little bit. It showed when it was wet and it's funny when I went back later, um, that it had somewhat disappeared. So didn't bother me. You could also use a glue stick. I am just going to stick that down. And again, there's no real perfection involved in this. So please try not to stress. A lot of times we're so focused on making everything perfect. We kind of lose sight of what we're actually doing. So there you go. Fabric makes almost like a hinge. It opens and closes. I am going to put a tiny little bit more adhesive. I kind of want adhesive right there on the edge. And I'm sure I'm going to have to do it on the other one. There we go. That's better. Okay. Now we've got it glued down pretty good. And this liquid adhesive, it's going to take probably five minutes to totally dry, but I would say in about a minute, it's it's holding pretty well. So that gives you a nice hinge. You could put as many interior pages as you wanted. Um, of course, it might get a little bit thick, which depending on your purpose for this, a little bit thick might not make any big difference. Um, I did want to go ahead and I want mine to be flat enough that I can stick it inside of a journal pocket. If you're not concerned about that, you might want two, three, well, probably three would be about max. Um, you could get away with a little bit of the bulk if you used the, uh, the faux vellum, the, the tracing paper. 
Um, one thing I will add, I didn't think this up, I read this somewhere, that if you were having a difficult time getting your printer to grab and feed your vellum, um, which in my case was tracing paper, they suggested um, using your vellum and just a little bit of glue stick up along the top edge that feeds into your printer first. They said if you put a little bit of glue stick on a piece of copy paper and stuck the vellum on top, um, it seemed to, your printer would seem to grab it and it would go through. What happens most often when it doesn't actually work right, your vellum partially feeds through and then it hangs up. There's not enough uh, body, I guess, of the paper to actually make it around the rollers and come back around. So if you try a piece and you get a little bit frustrated, um, keep that in mind. Try a little bit of, um, you could even use a, a tiny bit of, um, transparent tape, trans, transparent like magic scotch tape um, if you didn't have glue stick. So there's if, if there's a will, there's a way. So on this one, let's go ahead and we're gonna use vellum instead of um, a regular piece of paper that I had. The way that I did this, it's a super, super simple stitch. My gosh, if you don't sew, please don't freak over this. There's There is literally nothing to it. I have a, as we call it, a pokey tool. <laughs> I have, I have a, a needle tool. And all I'm going to do, I am just going to very loosely just hold this down. I'm trying to poke in the center. And I'm going to go up well, maybe an inch and a half. There's no exactness to this. If I had a book handy, I would actually lay that book down, open it up, and I would let this sit inside and I would be poking down into the crack of the book. I'm looking around my room really quick and I don't see a book within arm's reach, so we're gonna pretend like we have that. I am simply using embroidery floss. On my journals, I love to use waxed linen thread. On something like this, it is truly not important. I picked this because I thought it was a pretty color. I'm using kind of a fat needle. I threaded the entire six strand of floss through. I am going to go poke down through that center hole, pull it out the back, and I am just gonna hold that little tail because I don't wanna lose it. I'm gonna flip this over, and I am, I'd say that's about an inch, about an inch and a half down. I am gonna go ahead I'm going back down through the back cover. I'm still holding this little tail inside because I don't want to lose it. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that little tail and I'm going to go right past it. And I'm going to go down about an inch and a half again. And I'm poking it through. I am going to pull it out the back. And I am going to, for the very last stitch, I'm going to go down into the same hole or very close to it right there. And what I'm going to do on the other side, I'm going to make sure that there's one tail of thread on the left and one tail of the thread on the right. And all I'm going to do is tie a square knot. If you don't know how to tie a square knot, just tie a knot. A square knot someone taught me in Girl Scouts when I was a little kid will not untie itself. It is that simple. So if you're ever tempted to try and stitch signatures into a journal that you've made and you're intimidated, please try this method. It's super, super easy. The stitches are pretty. Um, when you've got a long book, you can make them as close together, as far apart as you want, but embroidered floss is actually very pretty. So we've got the basics of our little tag. Now we're going to decorate it. So we'll do the inside. On my sample, I went ahead and I used some of that vellum and I just tore all around the edges. Um, I'm gonna skip that for this, for this purpose. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the little prayer card. I would, of course, I would ink a little bit around it. On this one, I just had some, I had my embroidery floss box out. So I had some gold metallic thread. I just kind of, 
hold it up. I just wrapped it around uh, two times, tied a knot, cut it, called it good. I liked the loose threads and the metallic is really cool. So I am gonna just glue this down really quick. And you know, this is your your project. You decorate with anything that you like. I thought these little, I, I don't know if they're called holy cards. They're just so pretty. It might be pretty too to do a little bit of maybe some gold, um, like a stickles or a, a glitter glue for the crown. Um, so that's the inside. We've got a little tiny signature inside. You could always, this would be a cute place to write a note to somebody or something kind of secret that maybe you want to keep in your journal but you don't want everybody to read. That would be a way to kind of hide it. You've already got your pocket here. You can go ahead, if you've got an eyelet setter, you can do, let me see if I can get that up there. You can do the little metal eyelets. If not, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I, on the back, I had a label. Um, she's got some wonderful sheets of printables and I find myself reaching for them over and over. This, of course, it's got a B on it. I mean, what could be better than that? So I went ahead and I fussy cut it, but it, I didn't want it to be right smack in the middle. I kind of wanted it offset. So I just snipped off the edge. I'm going, well, I would have inked it. I should have inked it, but we're playing pretend here. So I'm just gonna stick that on. And again, no right or wrong placement. It's whatever kind of appeals to you in the moment. Um, I like the imperfection of the, the fabric. I like that it's not right up to the edge and perfect. So now we've got the front to do. The front was done with. I think this is so pretty. I can't actually read what, I think it says Fortunes. I think that's the name, Fortunes Double Yellow Rose. It's super pretty. So I printed it and instead of using the whole thing on the cover, I just fussy cut, but I fussy cut very roughly. I didn't worry about getting every last leaf. I don't think it mattered, especially when it was on the fabric. So I cut it out. I did ink the edges a little bit. Let's see if you can see that. And I would put some glue on this. And on mine, I actually, I took the time to go around each one of the leaves because I definitely don't want the edges to pull up. That is one thing that just drives me buggy on a project. I can't stand loose edges that start to peel up. And I'm just gonna stick that down. And it really is that simple. I tied a little ribbon through the top of each one of those tags. You don't have to, it just looked nice. And I, to, to tie the whole thing up, I really just, all I did was wrap that around it and I tied it in a little, a little knot in the back. And that was it. There are so many things you could do with this. If you look through the themed bundles, I'm sure you'll find something that will just, you know, make you want to print out a bunch of stuff and, and go to town. You could, on these pages inside, especially if you had multiples, you could fussy cut a lot of images and put on there. Um, a lot of the full page journal spreads would work perfectly for this because you could print out the eight and a half by 11 journal spread and you could cut that probably, oh gosh, very easily into at least four pieces, which you fold in half and that would make the pages inside. So I hope you'll give it a try. It was a lot of fun for me to make. Come and join us next time when you see what the next designer comes up with for Tag Team Friday. Have a great week. Bye-bye.